Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Zoom Into Wine. It's time for the show and your host, Ian Blackburn. Now I have the distinct pleasure of having Miss Haley Black, who represents Winebow, a fantastic team of very specialized sales uh, people that uh, import and distribute some of my favorite wines. And I'm always super impressed to find out just another star winery is inside of your portfolio, Haley. Yes. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, really excited to be talking about this um, often sometimes under the radar uh, wine region and also producer. Um, so right here, we have a great picture of Benjamin um, Romeo, the winemaker um, and founder of the winery. And this is a true story of... Um, a great grandson in winemaking. Um, he actually discovered an old castle or an old cave underneath a castle um, that he was really interested in and, and made a, a wine there back in 95. And um, he was just, it was kind of a fun little pet project for him, right? You know, he was making wine for a larger winery and wanted to do something on his own. Mm. And uh, he made this wine and it turned out beautiful. Um, and after that, he decided, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to make a few, I'm going to make a few more bottles of this. Right. But there wasn't enough space. It was a very tiny cave underground. So he talked to his parents and said, Hey, can I use your garage? But as he was making these wines in Rioja, um, the press caught, caught wind of them, right? And he received um, a lot of great accolades and a lot of great press from around the world, Robert Parker in particular. Um, and so he was like, okay, well, maybe I need to start just doing this on my own. Maybe I need to start focusing solely on this project. So um, let's talk a little bit about where we are um, and where the winery is located. So we're in Rioja, we're in Spain, um, so Northeast Spain. So the winery is located um, in Rioja Alta, just um, west of the west of the river and south south bank area. It's in a little um, area called San Vicente. Um, and that's actually where the castle is located, where the cave was underneath, where he made the wine. Ah. So you have a little arrow pointing there, which is great. He did actually build a winery. He's not still making wine in his parents' garage, it by the way. Under the castle. Um, this was in the early 2000s when he really decided to dedicate to the project. Right now, he's working with um, 50 different plots from around Rioja. So um, has as he kind of was starting to grow and build the winery, he sourced and found small, beautiful little vineyards to source the grapes from to make these wines. He really wanted to highlight different soils of the area, different microclimates, aspects, altitudes, and clonal variation. Um, you know, different clones of Tempranillo and Graciano that he works with. This is a beautiful picture of the old, um, very old vines, Gobelet trained, so you can see their, their head trained vines. Um, very typical of Tempranillo in the area. Um, he works very, very sustainably with all of his vineyards. So, um, you know, a lot of organic matter is being worked with to make sure that, you know, the, there's not a lot of chemicals uh, being used in, in the wines. So kind of very low intervention in that regard, which I we love. love right? I love this photo. It's just, they look like soldiers, you know, waiting to do battle in this amazing uh, piece of land. Absolutely. And when you look at, here's some pruning happening. When you look at these vines, you know, we talk about yields often, but sometimes we don't talk about how that translates into the wine, like what's in your glass. And so they're pruning here and they actually prune down each vine to just one bud. Um, so very, very low yields. And how that translates is, you know, one, the vines are struggling, which we like. But having those low yields, you get really great concentration as far as complexity and flavor profile in the wine. And another reason why these, wi these wines just show and age beautifully. So here's the sorting table. So everything's hand sorted. Um, you know, when we talk about him being very meticulous from sourcing all of these different plots and wanting to showcase these areas, 
it's not just in the vineyard and then it goes to the winery. Um, so very, very meticulous as far as um, what's going to actually be the final grapes going into using the wine. Wow. And then some pictures of winemaking here. Um, and I think this kind of really starts to showcase and talk about what is this wine. So the Carmen Gran Reserva, um, I like to talk about it's, it's an all-star of all of the wines that he makes and that it's very unique. Um, it's kind of the idea of tradition makes innovation or meets innovation, right? So um, 24 months aged in new French oak and then 36 months in bottle before released. Um, but really when the wine's being made, it's only free run juice. So there's not a bunch of extraction. It's very gentle and you get this beautiful, um, elegant finesse um, and expression of the wine. Tasting notes, you know, think aromatic herbs, sage, lavender, a lot of these floral notes, um, kind of dried cranberry. Uh, the glass really, really opens up to, to these kind of notes of vanilla, which you get from the oak, um, but also almost this kind of graham cracker and mixed with cedar, very, very complex. It just keeps evolving in the glass. And this wine is just showing beautifully now, but will still do well if you wanna lay it down in your cellar and revisit it in a few years or even in a decade, which I love. Yeah, these, these styles of wine are built like battle axes. They'll go for a lifetime and certainly when you put all of that location, low yield, meticulous winemaking together, you're gonna to get something truly special. And I was very stoked to be able to find this 2008. Uh, there's really very little of it made. Uh, it, uh, it, you'd have a hard time finding it. This is a kind of a cult producer of, of wine. We hope that you'll do uh, some other Zooms with us in the future. Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. Well, thank you for sharing this. It's a great story and a beautiful wine. And like you said, there's not much made and you snagged what you snagged what was left of it. So this there isn't going to be much more to be found after this. Right. So, yeah. Well, have a great day and thank you for your time. You as well. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.